Are you getting the wrong diagnosis about blood pressure when it comes to going to your doctor office? It is very possible that this could be occurring. There's a number of things that I'm gonna list for you here that are very, very important. And the reason this is important is because your blood pressure numbers can be so variable. Blood, diagnosing blood pressure is a very difficult thing to do. It's unlike any other diagnosis. If you go and you fall down a flight of stairs and they take an x-ray of your leg and it turns out you have a fractured leg, there's no question whether it's fractured or not. Very often, if you see a clean cut in the bone, it's definitely a fracture. It doesn't matter whether you were having an anxiety attack at the moment they took an x-ray. It doesn't matter whether you have what's called white coat syndrome, which we're gonna mention here in a bit. It doesn't matter if your legs were crossed, if you had caffeine that day. Imagine for a moment, you fell down a flight of stairs, you take an x-ray, the doctor says, there's a fracture. And then they say, well now wait a minute, you had caffeine this morning. That might artificially raise the risk of us viewing the x-ray. So they take another x-ray 10 minutes later and sure enough, the bone is not fractured. That's of course ridiculous, that would never happen. But in the case of diagnosing blood pressure, there's a number of things that can raise your blood pressure or lower your blood pressure and give you different numbers, drastically different numbers, like in the neighborhood of a difference of 30 to 40 points. So let's cover them. Number one, white coat syndrome. This means that just by the very nature of going into a doctor's office, you are nervous, you're maybe a little bit scared, your heart rate is racing because of the anxiety that's been developing from just simply being there. So they take you into a room, the nurse puts a blood pressure cuff on your arm, and sure enough, your blood pressure is high at the doctor's office. Now, if you were to take your blood pressure at home, it's totally normal, but they call it white coat syndrome because of the tradition of doctors wearing white coats, but no doctors wear white coats anymore. So that really doesn't exist. The other thing is people do have anxiety, depression. These are things that can raise your blood pressure to abnormal numbers, especially when you're in the doctor's office combined with white coat syndrome. The next thing is pain. So when a patient comes in and they're experiencing pain anywhere in their body, whether it's a headache, a wrist pain, elbow pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, back pain, neck pain, doesn't matter. When you're experiencing pain, your body goes through a fight or flight syndrome. And what this involves is your nervous system, your sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. Your cortisol from your adrenal glands is stimulated and this will raise your blood pressure. So if you have back pain and you go into the doctor's office and they just do the vitals, nurse checks your blood pressure and she finds that you have high blood pressure. You, she tells the doctor, the doctor comes in, he says, you have high blood pressure, here's some medications for your blood pressure, but you came into the doctor for back pain, that's a scenario where that might occur. Let's do the third one, coffee. Many people drink coffee with caffeine in an effort to lose weight. It's very common to uh, have coffee in the morning. And the reason why is because for many people, they're trying to lose weight, they're doing ketogenic diet or whatever, and they know that caffeine stimulates your metabolism. So therefore, uh, they have some coffee in the morning without eating any breakfast. And what that does is the idea is you're supposed to help you lose weight. But one of the things that happens is it raises your heart rate and raises your blood pressure. So right there, then if you have a morning appointment, you go into the doctor, blood pressure is high. Cigarettes are another one. If you, have, if you smoke cigarettes, that can raise your blood pressure. There's also some things that can lower your blood pressure, such as if you're a morning routine person where you exercise in the morning. Exercise, even just weightlifting exercise, but more cardio, your body will uh, stimulate within its own blood vessels a thing called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is a gas inside your blood vessels that's stimulated when you exercise and will open up and dilate the blood vessels. And this result of the exercise 
can last up to about 20, 24 hours. So if you exercise that day before you go to the doctor's office, that can change the blood pressure as well. The problem with this is your blood pressure can be all over the map when you go to the doctor. It's unlike your age. If you show up at the doctor's office and you're 55 years old, you are 55 years old that entire day and pretty much the entire year, right? The number doesn't change. It's not that variable. But blood pressure, my recommendation would be to, when you have high blood pressure at the doctor's office, ask them to check your blood pressure again later in the visit, at the end of the visit, and then you will find that the numbers can be drastically different. Different. So the question becomes, well, which number are you giving the medication for? Because if your blood pressure, let's say, is 150 over 92 and the doctor wants to give you medication, but by the end of the visit, literally 10 minutes later, it's 122 over 82, well, which drug is, they're giving you a drug for your high blood pressure, but which person are they giving it to? The one in the beginning of the appointment or 10 minutes later? So you can see the big problem with diagnosing blood pressure. The proper way to diagnose, this, diagnose blood pressure is this. First of all, the true definition of high blood pressure is high blood pressure when it does not change, regardless of whether you're active, regardless of whether you are changing your diet, regardless of whether you are excited or rested. But when di diagnosing high blood pressure, you need to check to make sure that a person has a resting blood pressure. What is their resting blood pressure? If their resting blood pressure is high and it's always high, then that is the true definition of hypertension, uncontrolled hypertension, where you cannot control it. But if you have a resting blood pressure that's normal under 120 over 80, but if you run up a flight of stairs, your, your systolic number goes up to 150, that's not the definition of high blood pressure because everyone's blood pressure is going to rise if they run up a flight of stairs right away and they smoke and they have coffee with caffeine and they have white coat syndrome and they have an anxiety disorder. So don't get too beat up on this idea that if you go in and you have the blood pressure taken just once and it's high, that that means you have hypertension because that is not the way they truly diagnose it. If you would like to know how to properly take your own blood pressure and do it the proper way, then watch this video at the end of the video and I'll show you exactly how to do it the traditional way that will give you the best accuracy to know exactly what your resting blood pressure is.